of particular note, uh, these speakers in here have been replaced with the illustrious Acoustic Research uh, 5, AR5, and they've been built in here with proper boxes. The crossover has been completely rebuilt. Uh, it's a three-way uh, speaker system. There's a woofer, a mid-range, and a tweeter. And the, uh, the original uh, crossover schematic is more or less followed in there. Uh, MDF construction is very solid sealed boxes here. Uh, that's bi-ampable, so if you remove the jumper, you can uh, separately power the mid-range and tweeter using the inside uh, amplifier, and then you might use a, a, uh, another amplifier to drive the woofer if you prefer to use bi-amping. Same on both sides. Uh, they do have this curious switch here, which says side, and there's a small 3-inch uh, driver on the side here to provide extra sound uh, coming out because the boxes are sealed, there's no way to, to leave the side of this open. So uh, you've got the amazing uh, acoustic research speakers in there, uh, circa 1969, I believe was the date code on there. They sound fantastic, they get down to 40 hertz, no problem, they're, they're uh, really nice speakers. Uh, fully stuffed, it's about the same volume as the original AR5. So uh, this is a major upgrade to the sound of this console. And you can tell, I mean, it just sounds fantastic. You play a really nice uh, uh, recording with piano, it sounds like the piano is right there in the room with you. Uh, so this is, I think, the biggest single upgrade to this console in terms of the sound. Obviously, the biggest the bling upgrade is this amplifier, which is just stunning. Uh, gorgeous wood sides, uh, powder-painted uh, front and back panels here with RCA uh, gold inputs and this incredible dancing tuning eye tube. Uh, it is just awesome. The paint transformers have been colored silver with this beautiful copper uh, plate on there. The, the entire amplifier has been reworked with uh, low noise resistors, uh, high quality capacitors. Uh, these capacitors back here, the original ones, they're only there for show. They're not actually hooked up. Uh, the nickel, satin nickel handles on the side with this wonderful uh, wood finish. Uh, these are just beautiful amplifier right here now. This is a, an NF2 amplifier that's been completely reworked. And again, that's two of the biggest uh, features of, of this uh, console, I would say, that I'm really, really excited about. But the Bluetooth uh, controller here is my favorite, I would say. I've I rebuilt somebody's uh, Grundig radio, and he says the thing is on all day long. The Bluetooth module in there, he just hooks it up to his phone and plays music through it all day. He loves the Bluetooth on that thing. And so I'm super happy to have uh, that capability in this console as well. Here's the Telefunken console. It's plugged in to turn it on. You simply open the lid all the way and the magnetic reed switch uh, which is back in, in here somewhere will trigger everything to turn on. And at this time the LED lights have turned on as well giving us a nice uh, lighting system. Record player on the left and a real player on the right. Again, there's more uh, lights in here to illuminate the uh, real player. And we also have the uh, cabinet. And down here we have the amplifier. And the amplifier has been completely rebuilt. And we've added a tuning eye tube on the front, which is really fun to watch as the music plays. Uh, it's got some really nice wood sides to it, and mounting plate on the front, some handles and uh, disconnectable uh, connectors in the back. This amplifier also supplies power to the radio and so uh, if the amplifier is disconnected the radio won't work either. These are standard RCA inputs for the amplifier and this is a control for the gain going to the tuning eye tube and we'll show the effect of that later. This is a Bluetooth module which allows the whole console to connect to your phone or uh, laptop computer or something like that, iPad. And once you use the, U the uh, Bluetooth, you really won't want to use anything else because it's that much fun. So let's see how this performs. Okay, very important. Because this 
console has a magnetic switch built into it now, which I added, uh, there's no need to turn this off each time. In the past, in order to shut the console down, you had to push the off button. Well, this mechanism wears out. Uh, the switch inside was not rated to handle the load that it's pr uh, presented on the original console, and so the, the switch burns out as well. So my recommendation is to leave the switches in the position that you like them in, and simply turn the unit off by lifting up this, this piece here. And the unit shuts off as soon as you uh, lift it up, as indicated by the LEDs turning off and the tube turned off and everything else. And once we open it all the way, the magnetic switch engages again and uh, everything powers back up, including the Bluetooth, which just made a sound. So, uh, let's see. So, if we want to use the FM tuner, we have to press FM. Okay, so if we want to use the FM radio, for example, we can simply press the FM button. And now the radio is on. Uh, I just pressed stereo there. And this is the tuning eye indicator. And if we tune this, uh, if we tune this off of the frequency, the, this light goes out. And when it locks onto a frequency, the light turns on to show that there's stereo mode, uh, stereo capability there. So that's the FM, and AM is similar. We can just press AM uh, and we'll be in the uh, AM tuning range. And there's not a whole lot of signals out here today, but let's see if we can find one. So there are a couple of signals out there for AM radio as well. Uh, shortwave one, shortwave two, uh, I haven't been able to get any signals on those two stations. I don't think they exist anymore, those two bands. Mainly you're going to be using this one, which is pickup-tape. And anytime you press one of these buttons, the stereo button turns off, which is very annoying. So I've got to go ahead and push that again. Uh, otherwise you have only mono sound. Uh, pickup and dash tape is are uh, two inputs on the back of the unit. Now that's the key, there are two inputs on the back of the unit. One is for the record player, and one is for the real player. Now I have the third input, which is the uh, Bluetooth module. The Bluetooth module is now piggybacked on top of the, the real player. And so you can play Bluetooth with the real player plugged in, but if you try to play the real use the real player, you actually have to unplug the Bluetooth module by disconnecting the white and red uh, RCA jacks. You can simply pull them out like this. Otherwise, uh, this unit effectively shorts out the real player and you won't get any sound. Uh, but again, once you start using the Bluetooth, you won't want to use the real player. I guarantee it. <laughs> it sounds so much, so much better. So uh, let's go ahead now that we have this on and demo the record player. So the record player uh, does accept a 12 inch record, which is great. This machine is tricky to use. I'm not going to lie. It is made to play up to two records at once, but we're going to just do one because that's hard enough. So this arm here, uh, the position is very important. If you don't have it in the right position, it won't play the record. So that's not the right place, and this is not the right place. It actually has to be in the middle, uh, suspended above everything else. It has to not drop down. Next thing you have to do is turn this knob uh, counterclockwise, and the record will start spinning. And once it starts spinning, uh, the armature will pick itself up and drop onto the record in its own time frame and it will start playing your record. Now you might notice that it doesn't start at the outer edge and that's because this was really made for a 10 inch record not a 12 inch record. So if you want to start right at the beginning you actually have to pick the, the armature up and drop it at the beginning and then it'll go ahead and play. Now if you finish the record and you get all the way to the end here.
it will go back to the center automatically stop but then it will start again exactly where it started the first time so we'll keep playing the record over and over again in this in this uh, condition here and if you want to stop the record player you can just turn this knob clockwise and it'll shut down and you can pick up the armature and put it back and then if you want it to start again a small uh, counterclockwise turn and it'll automatically start uh, moving the armature over and playing again like so and so far that is the best uh, configuration that I can uh, give to you to make this actually function correctly let's try the real player next for the real player we have the same settings uh, the PU tape setting and stereo uh, have the voice button pressed down I don't need that for audio that should be off and uh, this control here which has a bass and a treble clef allows you to use the ba uh, bass and treble controls here to change the tone otherwise if you turn that off uh, it ignores these and and uh, gives its own profile and then uh, the the AFC here has automatic frequency uh, centering and that is what allows you to lock onto a, a signal as you're turning the knob, um, which is useful for FM uh, in particular. Okay, so this is the real player. And before we turn it on, I'm going to go ahead and unplug this uh, Bluetooth module here. Otherwise, it will effectively short out the uh, real player. So this is hard to do with one hand. There we go. Okay, so the Bluetooth is not connected now, but this is on. Well, we've got to turn this on. Okay, and when it turns on, this spindle should start spinning, uh, which it is right now. And uh, we could go ahead and rewind some of this because I have some tape here. So we just flip this to rewind, uh, and it kind of takes its time. Let's just see how far that goes. Okay, it starts speeding up a little bit. And then, uh, let's say that's probably enough. This is why I hate real players. They always do funny things like that. Okay, we're going to go to play now. And it's playing too fast. Okay, it takes for it a while, but it does eventually slow down to the correct speed. Uh, turn the volume up. So there is some music there. There are multiple tracks. And uh, in this case, the recording that's done on here, uh, well, right now it's coming through the right channel. Here it's coming through the left channel, or maybe both channels. <laughs> and we can stop it by pushing this pause button up uh, and then we can restart it uh, by pulling this back down oops let's see I think I have to pick it yeah there we go there we go again you can pause it that way too uh, and so this is one way to operate the real player now um, if we take it out of play mode let's see I think I might have to unpause it no I can just take it out unpause it I can fast forward by turning it here. I can rewind uh, this way. And I think this likes to be used. It looks like things uh, move better when, when it gets used once in a while. Uh, there's a three and a three quarter inch per second setting and a seven and a half inch per second setting. I have uh, the larger cap stand on here now, which gives you a slower feed rate. So uh, it's on the three and Three quarter inch setting. I think this is only for a tone setting circuit inside. It doesn't actually change the speed of anything. Uh, let me demonstrate how to change the speed. Oh, this is a faster, actually this is the faster one because it's a larger diameter. You can actually unscrew the top here, 
pull this cap stand off, and now the smaller one there uh, will feed at a slower rate. So actually we're on the faster uh, speed rate now, the seven and a half inches per second. The quality is generally better at higher inches per second. So I guess this should be on uh, seven and a half. Now to record, uh, you have two options. Uh, let's see, is this record or is this out? This thing is a little complicated to use. So you've got the left channel record level and the right channel record level. And as I recall, if you want to use mono, uh, you pull this one out uh, and then you can turn it. But these set the incoming volume levels uh, through these meters. And to record, uh, you have to press this button while you turn this not to play, but to the one after it, which is record. And then you can unpause it and uh, it'll start recording then. And you've got to have your signal ready to go into it. Now the signal will automatically come from the radio uh, to record because there's a five pin cable buried down the side here, which goes to the back of the radio. And that allows it to record and play back from the tape player. If you want a different source, uh, you have to hook that up uh, yourself for the recording. Uh, and there's also a stereo headphone output here. And, uh, oh, there's also the um, left and right inputs for the microphone. So you could use this as an input source. However, the gain is going to be pretty high, so you have to make sure you dial back the signal level before you go in here. And you can check the signal levels on these meters uh, if you plan to record. And I don't really want to overwrite what I have on these uh, discs right, or on this tape right now, so I'm not going to demonstrate that. But this does come with the manual. Uh, manual for the 4000D uh, real player. And so you can read all about how to record uh, in here. And uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but it, actually if you're going to make a, a tape on this machine, it'll play better than um, what's here now, uh, most likely. So, uh, so that is the real player, quickly. Okay, now my favorite, the, uh, the uh, Bluetooth module. So I have it already hooked up. I'm going to go ahead and um, start something up while I'm um, talking here. So this is already connected. And uh, I, think I have to play it, actually. The way, oh, <laughs> we have not plugged this back in, so that's a problem. right channel. There's the left channel. Okay, so we got our Bluetooth module in. Uh, the way this one works, you press the Bluetooth button and the little light here will will blink uh, for something like 20 seconds. And during that time, you go over to your, uh, your, your system and you click your Bluetooth uh, uh, button there. And it'll show uh, eSyncin BT adapter, Bluetooth adapter. So eSyncin is the name of the company, and you have to click on on that and and, and select uh, to connect. Here it says connection. I'm using Ubuntu Linux here, but you can do it on your own uh, device at home. And once that connects, uh, it's quite easy. You just uh, select the output to be the Bluetooth device and start playing a song. And there we go. And so here, I'd like to show this uh, green tube here. It's pretty bright, so I gotta turn the dark, the brightness down. But this is what you get now when the music plays. And when I adjust this knob, I can make it more sensitive or I can make it less sensitive simply by turning the knob. Somewhere around the halfway point is about optimal at this volume level. If you turn the volume up, uh, that will will increase as well. Or if you turn the volume down, it, it decreases. So it's just kind of fun to have something there to show that it's actually alive. Now I wouldn't recommend keeping these doors closed while it's on um, because this amplifier does heat up. It's a tube amplifier. The vacuum tubes are quite hot. However, there are some air holes up here to help duct uh, hot air out. So it will be okay, but I, I still would prefer to leave at least one door open with that amplifier on. A quick tour of the back here. Uh, this is the radio portion here and also has uh, handles all the controls. There is high voltage back here, so don't stick your fingers in here. 
uh, and the vacuum tubes will be hot. Uh, and so you gotta be careful of that. Now there's an equalizer uh, buried under here and there's a button, handy button right on the side here. You can take the equalizer out or, or you can put the equalizer back in. And I've got some plots uh, here that I'm show uh, the before and after equalization. So that you can see we've got a you know pretty good flat curve on the uh, equalizer now. Uh, so it does definitely improve the sound dramatically. And it's very easy to use. It's a 12 volt equalizer. It runs off the same voltage that drives the uh, LEDs. Uh, there's a little power strip here where the, the uh, voltages come in and there's a, uh, uh, two wires that go up to the magnetic switch that's buried under the top here. You can just barely see a hole there uh, where, the, where the magnetic switch is located. So those are the main uh, features up, up in the back here. And the amplifier, I, I didn't mention the amplifier can be completely unplugged and it can be moved wherever you want. If you want to put the amplifier on top, you can do that. Uh, just make sure you plug in all the wires appropriately. Okay, somebody's gonna laugh at this, but yes, I have ground lighting effects on the back of this to, to light the wall behind the console. Uh, and it looks really cool. <laughs> anyway, as we go under the console here, uh, we've got the power strip that pretty much powers the entire uh, device. There's an unswitched outlet on this, on this uh, that is the 12 volt lights for the whole unit. And that's also uh, running through a little uh, circuit board here, which uh, controls the brightness of the lights so we can make them darker or we can make them even brighter. So there's three, three brightness levels there. And that also controls a relay. This is a solid state relay so that when the magnetic switch uh, is closed, that relay turns on the rest of the uh, of the power strip here. And so on this power strip, I have the Bluetooth module, which is this black uh, power supply. It's just a simple five volt uh, USB supply. Uh, this white one goes to the amplifier, which is also the power supply for the radio. Uh, this one is the real player, and this one is the record player. And there's a blank one here. And so if you want to mount a CD player inside the box, you can do that. There's actually an auxiliary input on the Bluetooth module for you to daisy chain in a CD uh, player or DVD player or something else that you like. So uh, I've got a little bit of options here. And you can route, route those power cables right through the holes uh, around here, or signal cables or whatever. You can, you can route those through the back and then into the uh, box on the front.